Some questions have obvious answers. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. How do you make an omelette? You break a few eggs. Others, it's a little more complicated. Like, how do you define success as a musician in the 21st century? That one's not so easy. What I can tell you is exactly how much I've earned from 4.7 million views of my original music here on YouTube. So stick around and let's get into it. I started posting on YouTube as a way of promoting my original music. I've been writing songs since I was 15, and I've always known I wanted to do this in some shape or form. I tried the traditional route, submitting demos to labels, meeting a rs doing open mics, cover gigs and weddings, hoping to be discovered. I think I am lucky that I've always enjoyed playing with gadgets and cameras and making short films with my friends, so I found it relatively easy to take to YouTube, and I also love it as a medium. I watch a lot of it. I admire the work of other creators. I'm not just doing it because it's a quick and easy road to success, because it's not. I don't think I would have been able to make over 500 videos if I didn't really love doing it. And I've also gone through different phases of trial and error to see what works. Mostly error, I might add. I've posted self-directed full music videos and straight up no frills live performances, just me and a guitar and a camera. I've tried shorter guitar instrumentals and full album audio only videos for my songbook project. I've used trips to guitar stores to showcase my original songs and riffs and accidentally demonetized my own video with my own music in the process. Lesson learned there. I've done a few song breakdowns where I go into granular detail, showing the development of a song, diving into the stems and so on as a learning and teaching experience. I've also published a reaction video where I was lucky enough to have Rick Beato and Rhett Schull with me as I played them my song, The Great Wave. Thankfully, their reaction was positive, but it was definitely a little nerve-wracking trying to maintain a cool, calm and collected face during the shoot. I've done several different challenges, like writing a new song in an hour, writing a Christmas song, and even finishing John Mayer's new song before he did. At the moment, I'm trying out a new schedule with a mix of content to challenge myself every week. One song, either a cover or an original, one essay, and one guitar or gear-focused video. I like the challenge of a deadline. I like to publish and move on, and I like to cater to the differing tastes of my audience because I know people are here for different reasons. Some like the essays, others just want to see and listen to some lovely guitars. I know some of you are musicians who are just starting out on your own journeys, and so I thought it would be useful to go behind the scenes and dig into some of the analytics and earnings from my own original songs so you get a better idea of the reality of monetizing your music on YouTube. Reality check. My original music is by far the least popular part of my channel. Plenty of people take the time to comment on my songs saying that they don't like them or that they don't like my singing voice or guitar playing. And to them I say thank you because I appreciate you. It definitely helps me keep my feet on the ground and keep innovating my content so that I just hit every single pocket of everything I'm interested in. The views are consistently lower than gear reviews or most essays, ranging between 10,000 for breaking down my own song only one, to 1 1.6 million what happens when I walk into a guitar store, which is the video I accidentally demonetized by getting an automatic copyright strike for featuring my own song. Those views might take several years or just a few days or weeks, depending on when they came out as my channel grew. Let's have a look at some analytics for a few different videos. Rick Beato and Rhett Schull's reaction to The Great Wave. This has 179,000 views. It gained me 500 subscribers, £613 in AdSense revenue since it was published in March 2022. 59.8% of viewers were not subscribed. And the CPM was £8.48. CPM is how much advertisers pay per thousand views. Do not forget, YouTube takes a huge cut. So use this as an idea for showcasing your own original music. Reach out to your peers and let them listen to those new tunes of yours on camera if they're willing and if you're brave enough. You can help each other out and hopefully build some audience crossover. Getaway Sun Acoustic. This is an acoustic solo performance of an album track, 19,000 views since 15th of October, 2023. I actually lost 18 subscribers in the first couple of days. See, I told you but I have since regained them. It's earned £43 in revenue so far, and the CPM is £6.73, and 71% of viewers were subscribed. 
For comparison, the album version of the track, which I posted as an audio video, has had 15,000 views, gained me one whole subscriber and earned £38. 80% of the viewers, or listeners, were subscribers. The CPM is £6.65. Long Island City. I shot this video in New York with the help of Adam Neely, and considering the budget was zero, I think it turned out quite well. It's had 137,000 views since it was published in July 2019, gained me 773 subscribers and earned £136 in AdSense. Almost 60% of the viewers were not subscribed and the CPM was £4.05. Super Sexy Heartbreak Album Update. I put this video out to introduce some of the players and the producer on my album. It's had 113,000 views since June 2023. It gained me 170 subscribers and earned just over £400 in AdSense. Almost 60% of the audience were subscribed and the CPM was £9.71. These varying view counts do make sense because people aren't really using my YouTube channel uh, for listening to my music. In fact, the idea that prompted the video in the first place is that in terms of earnings, one video that took me a morning to make, my carbon fiber guitar review, outranks 66 videos, my entire catalog of original music on YouTube. Does that make me less of a musician? Should I give up on playing original songs and focus on just doing gear reviews or covers forever and ever? Perhaps, but I don't want to do that. The reason I began this journey is because I think of myself first and foremost as a singer-songwriter. I have worked hard at that, and I probably wouldn't get the views or streams I do without the work I've put in on that and the work I've put in on YouTube. I wouldn't be able to demonstrate instruments and equipment in the same way if I had no musical background. There's an awful lot of conflicting advice out there uh, on the right way to promote your music or build your YouTube channel. And in my mind, showcasing your personality and making content that draws people in is the right way. It's all part of the hustle. Conventional wisdom these days is that you shouldn't spend time on longer form videos like a music video because most people's eyes are on TikTok and that's what's currently breaking a lot of new music. Well, I don't personally really consume TikTok as a medium and I don't want to compromise my wait for it artistic integrity just to try and find success. People can smell when you're not being real and they don't like it. When you look at an artist like Ren, he's had phenomenal success with high concept, complex music videos, artworks in themselves, because you have to be true to your artistic vision. Every video I've made, I've created because I really wanted to, and each one is an opportunity to get my music into your head as a backing track, as a quick segment, and even as, heaven forbid, the main event. So the total income for these 66 videos of my original music, equating to 4.7 million views, is roughly 4,867 pounds, or just shy of 6,000 US dollars. That carbon fiber guitar video I made four years ago is currently at an income of 7,739 pounds, or nine and a half thousand dollars, for just over 4.7 at 5.3 million views. A few factors come into play there. It's a 13 minute video, so it has plenty of time for ad breaks, and YouTube likes it when you make people stick around, which is much harder to do with a single song at just three and a half minutes. So if you're putting your original music on YouTube, try out different ways of building a video around your song, like breaking down the stems for those making their own music, or teaching the guitar parts, talking about the writing process, or giving some background to the lyrics. It's all promotion for you and your music, but it's a new and different type of promotion to the old days, but just as valid. In fact, better, because you control the narrative. You're the storyteller. I guess there's a few points I'm trying to make with this video. The first is that it's very difficult to make money solely from streams or views these days. Those of you who've seen my videos on the topic of Spotify know this already. You have to find ways to supplement your income as a musician that work for you that might actually be playing live or going in on great merchandise or selling other physical or even digital products. If you're a wonderful writer, consider a newsletter or building up your Patreon page. Take care of your community and never take them for granted. 1,000 true fans definitely beats millions of casual listeners. And if you're an absolute riot at short form content, good for you, play to your strengths. But Short form audiences do move on quickly, so it might be a little harder to convert those views to actual ticket sales or an album purchase, so perhaps you go all in on directing them to streaming 
your music. But whatever you do, make sure you stick with it because it's a long road to build your audience up and the urge to quit is going to be ever present, especially when you think that no one is paying attention. The counterpoint to that is that you can't ever guarantee virality. So enjoy it when it comes, but never expect it and certainly never try to manufacture it because it's painfully obvious when that's the case. Just be you. A couple of previous videos I put out about my income on YouTube have very quickly gone over a million views but there is absolutely no guarantee that this one will get anywhere near that. But I still think it's worth doing because the more transparency and openness we have in this new music business, the better. So if you found this video useful, then consider signing up to my free new newsletter, The 21st Century Musician. I am building a community of artists taking the independent route because there's never ever been a better time to take control of your creativity no gatekeepers, no middlemen. I'll be sending out weekly newsletters covering topics just like this one, highlighting opportunities for emerging artists and fielding your questions and comments on specific issues. So consider signing up. There is a link in the description. And as always, I'll be seeing you here again very, very soon. So be sure to hit that subscribe button.